Today is World Human Spirit Day and a great day to engage with our innermost voice. Consider the grandeur of the human spirit and encourage positivism and love. Meditation can be a significant element of honoring World Human Spirit Day. So yeah, today is World Human Spirit Day. When I saw this, I asked myself, I was like, which one is World Human Spirit Day again? <laughs> but yeah, what do, what, what do you think about this holiday? I, mean, I had to read about it, too, but then when I read about it, I um, got to understand it. So it's basically just about um, knowing that we are this we have a body and we have a spirit mm. in our body mm -hmm. so for me personally i um i have times where i just want to meditate and just connect with my spirit so christians i think we do this a lot yeah. right where you just some some people want to fast just yeah. to do uh -huh. that so i do that too and i discover that whenever i do that and i come out of it i feel more energized i feel inspired that's mm -hmm. for me personally so yeah what do you mean? I think it's valid. It makes sense. It makes, it makes sense, sense. Yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then what do you think about the holiday? Well, for me, I, I believe so much in um, meditation. I believe that sometimes, you know, you should just stay as a human being and just sit back. And I believe in introspection a lot. I like to, you know, after all is said and done, mm -hmm. I like to just go back, sit with myself. Now, take yourself out. There's, there's this McMill song I like, by the way. And that, that's the lyrics in the song. Take yourself outside of your body and look at yourself. So I, I believe in taking yourself outside of your body. Look at yourself, you know, judge yourself and say, okay, this is me. This is not me. So I believe so much in meditation. And I think that is something that every human being should adopt, honestly speaking. Okay. Um, do we have Uti? Uti is joining us via Zoom today. Uti, are you there? Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Hi, Uti. Hi, hi, ladies. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? <laughs> have you heard about all the unrest we've been facing? What do you mean have I heard about it? I'm living, <laughs> 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 I'm living it by the second. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Ah, uh, man. Yeah, All right. Glory, I'll start with you. What did you find in the news? Um, hoodlums on Friday hijacked the protest against Naira scarcity to rob residents and business owners in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital. Scores of hoodlums invaded the My 3 and My 1 market, forcing traders to accept their own notes or risk their goods being taken. Many traders locked their shops and fled while residents were robbed by hoodlums um and um i think about two days or almost a week now we've been mm. seeing this um yeah. hoodlums so now it's it's i think it's something will i call it orchestrated now because we have this protest it's like okay it states even yesterday someone said in a do state the same mm -hmm. thing happened yeah. in fact i watched a video where someone was shot so I think this is becoming really, really orchestrated because why is it suddenly everywhere yeah. around Nigeria, there's just this protest, hoodlums hijacking. And then again, I'll still go back to what I said the last time. We Nigerians, we should, this is a time where we should, we should, uh, we should try to be more flexible. It's a horrible situation. That's the truth. But how can we move it? How can we make it better for us? Because if Nigeria is poised today, if we fight today, it's the ordinary man on the street that will oh, suffer so it, true. right? These people at the top, they are going to leave this country. So if you are on the street saying you want to protest or you carrying weapons, you know, making people look at they are actually um, forcing traders to take their own. The truth is everyone is confused. Mm -hmm. But, well, let me not go deeper into I think we'll still come back to that. Yeah, yes. But that's what I found <laughs> in the news today. Okay, Damnola, what do you find? Okay, so the central bank of Nigeria office in Marina, Lagos State, was crowded with people who want to deposit their 1,000 naira and 500 naira old notes on Friday. This comes after the president, Gen Major General Muhammad Buhari, on Thursday morning during an address to Nigerians, announced that old 1,000 naira and 500 naira notes were no longer legal tender. I mean, as much as I can understand that Buhari is probably trying to find the balance between the Supreme Court's ruling and the central bank judgment. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't think that I subscribe to just taking, or rather everybody taking their old 1,000 naira and 500 naira notes just to the central bank. Mm. It is the APS bank, and I don't think that not everybody going there, having access there is particularly the right thing to do. Now, that aside, 
Everybody cannot go to CBN, if we are being honest. It's the crowd, anyway. Yeah. Everybody can. I, I, be, I believe that, at least for now, we should still have commercial banks taking the old 500. Already, we've already said, okay, well, that is no more legal tender. Fine, that's not a problem. But at least the commercial banks should still be able to take the old notes so that they can be able to give people, I, I mean, well, with ATMs around, okay. give people the new notes. But you don't tell everybody, because how many people can even go to the CBN, if we are being honest? How many people can go there? And how many... I don't think that CBN has so many workers like enough to, to handle... Workers. I don't think so. <sighs> I really don't think so. They're like 200 million people in this. Well, I mean, we're still going to come back <laughs> to this <in> main <laughs> conversation. But so what did you find in the news for us today? Uh, continuing in the same thread, uh, so my headline speaks to... Um, the situation that I think some Lagosians in certain parts of Lagos woke up to this morning. Uh, the headline says, Naira crisis violence speed, um, spreads to Agege and other areas of Lagos. So um, essentially civil unrest today in areas of, around Ojota, Agege, Korudu. Um, I mean, there's been videos flying around all over social media all day. Tensions are heightened everywhere. Uh, and and um, like Gloria said, this is really the frustration that is coming to the fore, right, right. of people um, not having cash, not being able to access their cash, um, banks being closed, ATM machines being um, empty. So I guess it's all coming to a head as we get closer to the election. Um, this is just to urge all our viewers and everyone to stay safe, to be vigilant. When you're going anywhere, please yeah. Yeah. check and try and get as much real-time yeah. updates because... I've had too many, you know, scenarios of people driving into this or this unfolding um, as they're passing by. So just for everyone to be really careful and try to stay safe. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Uzi. Just like she rightly said, I'm, I'm, I'm in that same line of thought that we're in very tough but precedented times, you know. And I trust that, well, governance is going to get better, but in all, make safety your top priority. Yeah, yeah. Be very, very careful wherever it is. Good. So God bless Nigeria. Amen. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So what I found: New Nara deliberate attempt to truncate democracy, and this was said by Governor Abdullahi Ganduje of Kano State. And he alleged that the Naira redesigned policy of the President Major General Muhammad Buhari is a deliberate attempt to truncate Nigeria's democracy. Ganduje spoke late Wednesday in Kano when he received the forum of former parliamentarians. Northwest zone that visited to the intimate that visited to in, intimate him of their resolve to support the APC presidential candidate Bola Metinubo. Ganduje, whose record remarks have gone viral, said it was unfortunate that despite the collective efforts made by the APC to ensure Buhari's election victories in 2015 and 2019, after several losses, the president had resolved to pay the party and those that supported him back by destroying the party that brought him to power. I mean, I saw this and I asked myself, I'm like, is this even the proper thing for you to come out and say, in this time where people are going through such hardship in the country, then you come out and say, oh, after everything we've done for you, this is how you want to pay us back, or you are doing this indeliberately. I mean, these are the issues. These are There's the so things that we talk about. There's so many theories out there about what this is about. <sighs> okay, let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll be discussing our topic for tonight. <laughs>